today, the A to Z of Zwift on Apple TV. It's already a big hit in our household. Today, I'm gonna to take you through the unboxing, the user interface, head-to-head -head comparisons with Zwift on other platforms, and how to connect all those peripherals over Bluetooth and more. Let's get into it. Let's kick this off with the unboxing of the Apple TV 4K. This is the 32 gig version. I didn't worry too much about the 64 gig version. It was also unavailable here until after Christmas. So 32 gig version is what I've gone with. $237 Australian, well under $200 US and well under 200 pounds. So quite cheap for what they are. And we're done. There really isn't much to them in the box here. Remote, unit itself. Power cable. And more protective plastic than you can poke a remote at. Very minimal documentation included, and a few stickers. Lightning cable's included here because it charges the remote. The remote can go flat, so plug it in there, charge via USB every now and then, you're good to go. Now the part we all love. I am taking my time with this. Absolutely marvellous. Okay, here it is side by side. 4K with Gen 4 next to it. Not a lot of difference. Only difference is in here at the back. There's a service port on the Generation 4, the older model, and the newer model doesn't have it. That's really pretty much it. Remote-wise, very much the same. There's a white circle, though, on the 4K version. Doesn't get any easier than this to turn it on. One power cable, one HDMI cable to the television, all systems go. We select the country we're in, once we get the hang of the scrolling remote there. Now the coolest thing, if you've actually got an iPhone, you can set pretty much everything up straight from your iPhone, so whacking the security code there. It'll pull down all of your settings off your phone, and there's minimal setup on the Apple TV itself. I enable pretty much everything and analytics to developers just to be handy. You can see here it's actually pulling the apps across or syncing them from the same profiles I had the previous Apple TV. So once Zwift is downloaded, if you don't have Zwift downloaded already, jump to the App Store, search for Zwift. It's super fast to come down. It's a few hundred megabytes and you're done. Here we go. And because we're partnering, I guess you'd call it that, with the phone here, we can enter our passwords and our emails via the phone rather than have to use the remote. Just quickly run through the pair menu here just to get everything set up. We'll deep dive into the pairing further in this video. For now, we'll just connect the Tax Neo so we can make sure it's all working. Let's pull up all the Bluetooth sensors there. And here we are in game. Connected Zwift mobile link. Just to make sure everything's working, it's put me in the volcano there with our good mate, Get to the Chopper. I've just quickly flipped over to fan view here. And the experience, initially, looks pretty nice. The screen resolution is nice, the refresh rates are nice. This isn't a 4K TV, but it's showing in 1080, which the game is actually rendered in no matter what television you're actually using. If you're using a 4K TV, it's only the menus that are rendered in 4K. The game itself is 1080 for now. We'll uh, just dish out a ride on. There we go, ride on buddy. Okay, let's dive over and have a look at the navigation. Let's go through a quick crash course on using the Apple TV remote. At the moment, there's limited functionality with the remote itself, but I can show you what we can do with this one. Scrolling up, we'll bring up the little menu down the bottom here. And from there, scrolling around, we can use our standard options for obviously ringing the bell, 
hammer time, being toast, and everything we're familiar with. You can also do uh, U-turns with that as well, with the U-turn button there, and camera angle changes. All the standard functionality along the menu bar there is available. Also, the menu button on that side obviously brings up the menu. And you can see there, whatever's active is what you click on. You can see the pink highlight and whatever's moving is where your current cursor is active. So I guess one of the most complex menus will be customize. We can go and let's try and change sock height. That's probably the most difficult thing we can do. Scrolling sensitivity is a little bit tough. Let's go some full Zwift socks. You can see there it's pink and we can change sock height. And that's just using the remote here. So not too bad for usability. Once we're done, we can hit done down the bottom there or we can just hit menu to get back out. Same with settings, scrolling up to the settings. Trainer difficulty can be manipulated with the scroll bar. And once we're done, okay and we're back. So not too bad the functionality enabled with this, but the true power comes when it's paired with Zwift Mobile Link. So when you're on the same network, running the Zwift Mobile Link app, we can do a lot more. So if we wanna interact with the riders on the sidebar there, we go to Zwift is nearby, and if you're familiar with the app, everything works exactly the same. So we can jump over here to K Miller. No relation, but we'll go and check out FanView. And we can give write-ons. We can also see the map and everything we're familiar with with Zwift Mobile Link. If you're lucky enough to have a power-up in-game, a simple scroll from the top down on this unit will allow you to then click the power-up or activating it from the Zwift Mobile Link also works. And you can use both at the same time as well here too. So I could be chatting on this one and back to me on the other one using the other remotes. So there's the combination you can use. Once you get the hang of this, it's not too bad, but always have this in your pocket at the same time. On to the direct head-to-head -head comparison here with the Apple TV 4K. First of all, putting up against the Alienware Alpha i3, which runs a GeForce GDX 860M. This is a few years old now on the Alienware. It has been souped up a little bit, but you can see here side-by-side -side comparisons of the Apple TV 4K. The biggest difference you can notice is the shadows. Apple TV version of Zwift will not have shadows, not yet anyway, not on the 4K version, they have been disabled. But one for one, the gameplay is looking pretty good. What to look at here, the key points are the parts where the ground is moving the fastest along the bottom and also how fast things are moving to the side. So as you go past trees there, you can see them move nice and smoothly on both of these platforms. So Apple TV 4K versus PC. Under the bridge there, nice and smooth. And the roads moving nice and smooth past the screen. On the Alienware, this is running in high and 1080. There's also ultra mode. Alienware's not quite capable of ultra. Over to the iPad Pro. 10.5 inch, you can see there it's a four by three resolution, so you're not gonna get the 16 by nine widescreen. Very similar experience, again, looking at the road speed as it flies past the bottom and passing things on the left and right there. If you look up the road, there's not a lot of difference in all the platforms, but it's how smoothly you pass things, I guess. But the iPad Pro doing quite well, dust kicking up there. Birds chirping away. There'll be a slight color difference between both the systems that I show on at any one time here because of the way this is captured. The very similar experience with the iPad Pro and the Apple TV 4K. Over to an iPhone 7 in comparison and back to 16 by 9 widescreen. Slight different time of day with both the worlds that I have loaded here, but the graphics are a very good indication of how smooth they run. And again, looking at that road speed, passing things on the roadside. These are actually scaled down too for YouTube, so 
just be aware of that. So very similar graphic objects. Not a lot of difference between the two systems there. The iPhone's quite impressive, and this is only the 7, so the 8 even has more. Okay, probably not a good representation of the MacBook Pro 2015 here running the Iris 6100 chipset. It kind of struggles, to be honest, and it's capturing at the same time too. I won't give this one too much airtime, but just take note of the level of detail there. But you can see if a system struggles, they're the difference in the experience. If you have a struggling system there on the right versus one on the left. The newer MacBook Pros run a lot better than my 2015 model. Okay, head to head, Apple TV 4K versus Apple TV Gen 4. The Gen 4 version on the right is filmed with a camera because I don't have two uh, capture devices for HDMI. It's come out okay, the colors will be a little different though. Now as I was saying about road speed, right on the bottom of both of those screens there, you can definitely see the frame rate differences there between the two systems. The 4K, nice and smooth. The Gen 4, the previous version of the Apple TV, a little rough. And when we pass things like trees, you can see there, the Gen 4 just struggles a little bit. Still very usable, but it's not a buttery smooth experience. As mentioned before, the Apple TV 4K renders in 1080, no matter which platform you're using or which television you're using it on, even a 4K TV, it's only the menus that are in 4K. The Apple TV Gen 4 renders in a little bit lower than that. So highly, highly preferable to go the Apple TV 4K. You can see here the trees and the foliage on the roadside are just a little jagged as they move past the screen. Okay, onto the infamous S's. We use this to test trainers. We can also use it to test the graphics performance. And you can see there on the right, those trees are a little flip book style, I guess you'd call it, as we're coming around corners there. I believe the average frame rate we can expect from the Gen 4 is about 21 frames a second, whereas the Apple TV 4K is artificially capped at 30 frames a second to keep it nice and smooth. Okay, so that's solo riding done. How do we go in a bunch? This is the biggest bunch I could find today for this testing. One of the WBR flat lap, flat out races. And uh, I tried to capture the bunch here, but the, uh, the guy I followed takes off from the front. As the bunch organize themselves, he will be soon swamped. Here we go, okay, so more riders on the screen coming up. But again, that bridge passing, much better than the 4K. This is one of the final shots I'll show for today on the head-to-head -head comparisons. What you can see here though is the Gen 4 really does start to struggle with high up detail in a bunch compared to the one on the left which is nice and smooth. Here we go. Okay, we can see the pedal stroke there. Just sort of lags and jags I guess you'd call it. And hands down, the 4K is winning here. And also do a sneaking comparison here, but we can't show you anything at all. Watch for this space. On to connecting your peripherals to Zwift for Apple TV. Now by peripherals, I mean smart trainers, power meters, cadence sensors, heart rate monitors, etc. First up, there's no Ant Plus connectivity direct to Apple TV, so it's all done over Bluetooth. The Apple TV has a limitation of three concurrent devices that can connect directly to it over Bluetooth. One of those devices is the remote, so you're limited to two device connections. Now it's not all bad news there because some devices can do multiple things for you. For example, the Tax Neo here will transmit power, controllable trainer, and cadence. So there's three all in one device, leaving one more connection for your heart rate. Job done. That's the perfect scenario. If you need to connect more devices or you need to connect the legacy Ant Plus devices, there are a few different options. First up, Zwift Mobile Link will act as a bridge for Bluetooth devices. So you can connect multiple Bluetooth devices to Zwift Mobile Link. 
and that then pairs to your Zwift session over your Wi-Fi. That's one way around the Apple limitations. Another one is to use something like the NPE Cable Ant Plus Bridge. The Viva heart rate strap also acts as a bridge. I don't have one to test at the moment. Stay tuned for that. The cable device itself is designed to take input channels from multiple Ant Plus sources and transmit them via Bluetooth. The beauty of this is you can take multiple sources, so heart rate monitor, cadence sensor, or power meter from different peripherals, and they transmit over the one device, the cable. A very handy solution if you need multiple devices connected to your Zwift for Apple TV. So in summary there, the limitation of Bluetooth isn't much of a problem. Everything being sold these days in the smart trainer world is dual, Ant Plus, or Bluetooth. Most peripherals you buy these days, such as the Wahoo ticker strap here, are dual channel, so you can connect Bluetooth or Ant Plus. And there's other solutions, such as the NPE cable, that we can use to get around that pesky three device limit on the Apple TV. So there's a wrap on my A to Z of Zwift on Apple TV. The 4K version, super, super impressive and leaps and bounds above the Gen 4 Apple TV. I'm happy with the upgrade there. But remember the price point, under $200, pounds, euros, whatever your currency is, it's under 200 of those for either the 32 or 64 version. It's a no brainer. If you need a Swift, Zwift machine, this will run it very, very well. Remembering you'd still need a screen of some sort to hook it up to. So it's not just the $200 price point. You do need to spend a little bit of money on the television or have one ready to go in your pain cave. So there we have it, we'll leave it there for today. If you have any specific questions, we'll do a few follow-up videos in the future, diving into things like the cable, Viva heart rate strap, solving problems and getting people up and running with their new pain cave on Apple TV. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.